What's up, you guys? Welcome to today's video. As you can tell by the title, we have a very heartbreaking video today. And there's no reason I should be making this video, but this country never learns. If you are new here, hi, my name is Jess. I'm a person in long-term recovery who has in fact gone to prison in Arkansas. So I'm pretty familiar with the ins and outs of county jails like this, and we're gonna get into it. If you wanna follow me on any other social media platform, TikTok, Instagram, Patreon, that's $2. It's only ever gonna be $2. All of that is linked down below, as well as my vlog channel, my podcast, where you can find me on Roku and my Facebook page. Without further ado, let's kick this thing off. So I'm very grateful that my friend Megan shared this story with me the other day. It is absolutely heartbreaking, but let me go over the gist of it. I'm going to read to you this article. This is out of Jonesboro, Arkansas. Inmate died after nurse initially refused hospital transfer despite jailer concerns. The on-duty nurse at the Craighead County Detention Center refused to send an inmate to the hospital on May 3rd after multiple requests by the jailers because she said there was nothing the hospital could do for him when he was coming off the effects of narcotics, according to records released to the NEA. Uh, Brock Austin Tyner, I hope I'm saying his last name right, the inmate who initially was taken by an ambulance after the jailers insisted was pronounced dead at the hospital early May 4th of 2024. The details were revealed in a records request made by the NEA report to the Craighead County Sheriff's Office. And every time I say Craighead County, it just sounds like Crackhead County. I I'm sorry. I didn't name the place. <laughs> The details were revealed in a records request made by the NEA reports to the Craighead County Sheriff's Office, two incident reports, internal investigations, jail logs, video, and other records were all released as a part of the records request. It began the night before at 10.55 p.m. on May 3rd when a 911 caller reported Brock having a medical episode on G Street. EMS was dispatched along with officers from the Jonesboro Police Department. Officer Joshua Harris arrived on scene at 11.01 p.m. Dispatch logs show EMS, which had been en route, canceled by Officer Harris at 11.04 p.m. Instead, Harris arrested Brock for public intoxication and transported him to the Craighead County Detention Center. So you're telling me that an officer got there six minutes later, saw what was going on and decided, you know what, I'm not going to, I'm just going to cancel that ambulance that's coming because I know better as a cop and I'm going to take him to jail. He canceled the ambulance. He assessed the situation and four minutes or less later, three and a half minutes later, decided, you know what? that ambulance. There is no way that an officer that even had a speck of education when it comes to how to deal with a mental health crisis combined with somebody that is using substances, there's no way that any officer with any kind of training would look at Brock and say, hey, jail. Because he knows damn well, or he should know, the officer should know damn well that they don't have the right resources at the jail that the hospital does. After two seconds of seeing this video, I could tell that he needed medical attention. Brock's mother, Alice Taylor, told NEA report this week she doesn't understand why the officer would cancel the ambulance. Ma'am, there was no reason to. There's no, there's no justification for that. My son asked for help and never received it, Alice said. It breaks my heart. I don't understand how one human being can call off an ambulance and not take him to get help. I don't understand this. I have cold chills reading this. Officers arrived with Brock at the jail. As previously reported video showed, Brock appeared to be experiencing the effects of an overdose. Detention officers requested the on-duty nurse to perform an exam before accepting the inmate. So again, here's another check that we're doing. The officer who is the first responder said, let's take him to jail. He goes to jail and the on-duty nurse now has a chance to come in and say, we are, we are going to accept this person into our jail or we are not going to accept this person into our jail. Nurse Delaney Hall performed the wellness check and decided he was in good enough shape to be booked into jail. Where did you go to nursing school? The reports say the inmate was combative and video does show him spastically moving and having difficulties controlling his movements. Corporal Joseph Mitten decided to place Brock in an emergency restraint chair. Brock was locked in a search room where he continued to yell and struggle. Those restraint chairs are even more traumatic. And I don't understand how a jail, I mean, the officers did say that he needed to go to the hospital, but still, as a human being, you're going to restrain this man that is completely 
not capable of controlling his movements, which you see in the first one second of this video from the 911 um, caller, um, which was made at 10.55 p.m. But she recorded the situation and she's like, it's okay, baby, it's okay. You're gonna be okay, help is on the way. When using the emergency restraint chair, detention officers are required to keep a log and check the inmate every five minutes. After six minutes, detainees are supposed to be let out of their chair to use the restroom, walk around, and move his or her arms unless still actively combative, according to guidance printed on the emergency restraint chair log. Now, I will say that like this is a very traumatic thing, and I don't understand how the jailers could, in good conscience, put him in this restraint chair and try to physically stop him from, from moving around. It's clear that he can't help it. It's not his fault that he's moving all around. He is suffering extreme an extreme mental episode. He is on drugs. He has a, you know, he has a lot of substances in his system and he is in desperate need of medical attention. This is not something that a jail is equipped to handle. But all they know is restrain the inmate, lock the inmate up. Like they don't know anything else. <sighs> Brock was put in the restraint chair at 11.17 p.m. on May 3rd. The first hour's log shows he was yelling and moaning for the first 30 minutes and moaning for the second 30 minutes. At one point, he maneuvered himself upside down and had to be placed in a different restraint chair by detention officers. Again, I could not take Brock out of that chair. I couldn't put him in the chair. But then to see that he is completely out of control, he can't control what he's doing. He can't help it. You see that. You see that pain in his eyes. You see that he's under a lot of substances. They not only were like, okay, the restraining chair is not working. He's upside down because that's how you know sporadically he's moving and how he's just incapable of holding still. Let's put him in a different chair. At 12.22 a.m., detention officers noted he was still moaning, but at 12.27 a.m., jailers reported he had become quiet. Jailer Megan Ferguson wrote in her report that she checked Brock and noticed he'd slumped over with his eyes halfway open and bloodshot, breathing very heavy and unresponsive. Ferguson reported she radioed for Nurse Hall, who came to booking and said his vitals were fine. Again, where did you go to nursing school? She checked his blood pressure, but only checked his pulse by placing her fingers about two inches under his ear, Ferguson reported. Ferguson told the nurse he did not look good and probably needed to go to the hospital. But again, Hall told her his vitals were fine and left booking, which is when they say booking, they mean like the intake area because he still has not made it out of intake. They have him in like a drunk tank or something. However, Ferguson acted on her concerns and went to the control pod to tell corporate Mitten she didn't think the jail needed to keep Brock because he did not look like he was doing well. Mitten said to have the nurse come back down to booking about 20 minutes and if he wasn't any better to send him to the hospital. For some reason, to all of these jailers, like the the hospital is like the last call and they're like oh let's just trust the nurse let's trust the nurse and i do understand that some inmates fake medical emergencies to try to go to the hospital but any person with two brain cells and a decent fucking conscience would look at brock and say he is not okay i am not accepting him anyone in charge at this jail should have looked at him and been like absolutely not we are not accepting this inmate he needs to go to the hospital and then you can bring him in for a public intox which would be what a 24-hour hold so what the fuck are you waiting for at 12 47 a.m ferguson checked on brock again she loosened his wrist restraints which appeared to be too tight and checked his pulse his heart rate was very fast she noted at 12 55 p.m she returned to check on brock his Pupils were extremely dilated and nothing seemed to be any better, she reported. The jailer called Nurse Hall back into the search room to check him again, with Ferguson telling Hall that she thought he needed to be sent to the hospital. The report state Hall responded that his vitals were fine and that the hospital was was not going to do much due to coming down from something. Corporal Mitten came to booking around this time and told the nurse they probably should send him to the hospital. The nurse finally stated, we can send him to the hospital. Well, thanks, lady. Like saying send him to the hospital is that big of an inconvenience for you? At 1 a.m., dispatch was called and an ambulance was sent to the jail. At a, at 1.11 a.m., detention officers checked Brock again and found him without a pulse. Yet again, Nurse Hall was radioed to come back to booking to help. Jailers began chest compressions at about 1.15 a.m., reported getting a pulse back. At the same time, Emerson Ambulance Service arrived at about 1.30. The ambulance departed and transported Brock to St. Bernard's. At 2.06 a.m., Corporal Mitten was informed that the hospital had pronounced Brock dead. A toxicology screening conducted at the hospital found methamphetamine, amphetamine, fentanyl, and THC in Brock's system at the time of his death. 
The tragic ending to a 21-year-old's life has left his mother grieving. As Alice explained to a reporter, she knew her son had problems and she tried to help him, but to no avail. He was a twin, Alice said. He lost his twin a couple of months before I gave birth and now I lost my youngest son and I don't get it all because somebody can't do their damn job. I don't get it. I'm not the type of person who can be that mean and vicious to somebody. Alice was grateful for the bystanders who called 911 and recorded the video of Brock in a medical distress before he was arrested. It showed how obvious it was that he needed help, she said, adding the two women who tried to save his life visited her and brought her flowers in the weeks after. However, Alice is distraught over the lack of compassion she feels was shown to her son. She specifically asked why Officer Harris canceled the ambulance and why Nurse Hall repeatedly neglected to send Brock to the hospital. Nurse Hall completed a report about the incident, which was included in the files obtained by NEA. Um, this is very small. I have to get my phone way up here to read it. So this was written by uh, Nurse Hall. At approximately 2238 on 5324, booking officers called medical to assess an intake in the search room. Upon arrival to the area, PT appears disoriented under the influence. Arresting officer reported PT to possibly intoxicated on PCP. So they, they know what they're doing for sure. Um, PT was unable to respond to verbal questions at this time. PT displaying erratic behavior. PT placed in a restraint chair for safety concerns. Restraints checked at this time and were applied appropriately. PT placed in booking room and chair to be monitored. At approximately 23.30, booking officers called for medical to assess PT and chair due to being non-responsive to verbal cues. PT vitals were WNL at this time, BP 124 over 78, breathing pattern normal, RR 22 BPM, pulse strong. PT continued to be monitored with periodic checks from both booking office officers and medical. Medical called to booking again at approximately 1255, reported PT breathing but not responding to verbal stimuli. BP WNL was 110 over 70. PT appears disoriented. Pulse strong. Ambulance called at approximately 1258. Booking requests medical staff to booking reporting PT is unresponsive and not breathing. Booking officers was initiating CPR upon time of arrival. CPR continued until the ambulance arrived at approximately 0118, so 118 a.m. Brock's parents were divorced at the time of his passing. The family is exploring legal options for the possible wrongful death lawsuit. However, nothing has been filed at the time of this report. All I ask is for everyone to please keep me in your prayers because that's the only thing that's keeping me going right now, Alice said. And keep Brock in your prayers. He deserved so much better. Yes, ma'am, he did. And um, so that that was the first article. There is an additional article that I wanted to go over. Oh my God, the video is horrible. And I don't know if I can like, I don't know if I can show the video. It's, it's heartbreaking. Um, but just to like give you the gist of it, he was completely like unable to hold still. And he is very, very much like that all over the ground on the sidewalk in that video. Um, but I just think that it's something that is going to be one, very triggering to you guys. And two, I think it's insensitive to share that video, but just know that he is completely like, like obviously very, very, very high. Um, I have seen people like that over the years and it's heartbreaking. So I don't think that I'm going to show that. This is another article. It says lawsuit filed over Brock Tyner's in custody death in Jonesboro. A lawsuit has been filed by the family of Brock Tyner over his in-custody death on May 4th, 2024. The wrongful death lawsuit alleges Tyner's state constitutional rights were violated when he was arrested on May 3rd for public intoxication by Jonesboro Police Department. According to the lawsuit, Tyner would not have died on the night had he been taken to the emergency room instead of jail. And they probably just go over every single thing that I had already said. The, the nurse has been fired, so that's good news. I would like criminal charges, not only on the officer on scene for just negligence, like this is negligent homicide, uh, and I would like charges pressed for the nurse as well. I will say, though, that criminal charges when, when you're dealing with this kind of situation is a lot harder. That is why I'm assuming they were advised to go for a wrongful death lawsuit. And we've talked about this a bunch of times in a lot of my other videos. The standard for criminal charges is a lot higher. You have to prove a lot more things to get criminal charges. 
on the civil side of it, you don't have to prove as much evidence. This article tells me they have everything that they need to win a wrongful death lawsuit because they have all of the medical records. They have a very clear timeline of exactly what happened and exactly who did what. They have the video footage at um, which would be shown at the beginning and they have everything they need to prove that Brock could have been saved if he went to the hospital. And that's really all you need to win a civil case. My guess with that would be that uh, Craighead County, they don't want the smoke right? They're probably going to settle as quickly as they possibly can for as little as they possibly can so that this can get swept under the rug and they can move on about their day. What needs to happen is these officers have to be trained in mental health, trained in substance use disorder, and how to handle these crises on the ground. These nurses and these staff members in, that are working in jails also need to be trained. Um, first of all, they need some fucking sensitivity training. Second of all, they need mental health training. They need to know that there are consequences for their actions and treating a human being like this is not okay. So yeah, the jail nurse was fired. That's cool. Is she going to work somewhere else? Like that's not enough for me. A man lost his life. A 21 year old kid lost his life. And this just keeps happening over and over and over again. When is it going to be enough? I really wish that someone in that jail tried to give him Narcan. I don't, I don't think that the Jonesboro Police Department or Craighead County will ever watch my video. But if you do, guys, if you don't have Narcan, if you don't have enough Narcan, I have tons of Narcan. I pass it out to police departments that don't have enough. If you don't have the budget to have a fucking closet full of Narcan, I will give you Narcan. If you don't know how to do Narcan training, I will give you Narcan training. Anyone that is in the state of Arkansas will give you Narcan training. I'm not there, but I will send you all of the Narcan that you need happily. I will happily do it. If you see somebody in intake that is going through this, give them fucking Narcan. If you're wrong and they have not ingested fentanyl, guess what? It's a no spray. It, it doesn't bother them. It, nothing happens to them if you're wrong. But if you're right, it could save a life. So if you don't have a closet full of Narcan, Craighead County, please fucking email me. My email is in the description box of this video. I will help y'all. I want to help y'all. I want to help any police department or jail that does not have Narcan. So please reach out to me if you see this video. And yes, I'm going to be sending it to a bunch of people to send to y'all because, oh my God, I know that there were a lot of you as corrections officers that tried to tell that nurse that she was wrong. And I appreciate that. You should have done something sooner. At the bare minimum, you should have tried to give them Narcan, but I don't know what your budget looks like. I don't know if you have it. So I'm not trying to scream at you. I'm trying to help. I'm just very passionate because there was no reason for this man to lose his life. I know that it is the beginning of June and this happened a month ago. I'm just hearing about it now. But if there is some kind of GoFundMe for uh, Brock's family um, or you know his, his funeral arrangements, anything that I can contribute or help or share, please let me know. I'm going to end today's video here. As always, I love you guys. Stay safe, stay in recovery, whatever that looks like to you. Rest in peace, Brock. And I will see you all in my next one.